Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Um, I decided to give the podcast a uh, try out, um, so hopefully it goes well. Um, I recorded once before, uh, but I really didn't like where I was sitting, and um, I just there's a few things I didn't like, so I've decided to try again. Um, I tried once more, and I ran out of time, so hopefully I don't run out of time this time. I'll try not to ramble on as much. I apologize for any um, noise. My neighbor just started doing something that sounds kind of like a vacuum. I don't know. So I apologize. I hope the sound isn't too bad. I hope the quality is not that bad. I am podcasting using my iPad, and as for uh, and I'm outside. Um, so as for the sound, I don't know how the quality is going to be. Um, I also have um, some really bad allergies going on. So um, I apologize for any scratching of my throat. Uh, my throat's just not that strong right now. And I apologize for any sniffling or rubbing my nose or any of that stuff. Um, so I apologize ahead of time. Um, I'm Sarah. Um, I live in Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. I'm about probably um, 45 minutes, half an hour away from Boston. Um, could be more, could be less. It's not that far. Um, and i um, about the same distance, half an hour or so, from Salem. And I love where I, I, love where I live. Um, and it's... It's great access to everything. Um, I am a behavior therapist for the public school system um, near Boston, um, out in Newton, and I really enjoy it. Um, I've been working at this particular school since February. Prior to that, I worked at a bank. Um, but before that, I was also a behavior therapist working at a school where kids with severe autism. When I got injured there, that's why I went back to banking. Um, banking wasn't cutting it for me, so I went back into the school system, and I am loving it. Um, the people I work with are great. I've started, um, I'm teaching a bunch of them, uh, the girls I work with, how to knit, and it's been a lot of fun. Right now, um, the kids are out on school vacation, and I do their summer program for about six weeks, so I finally have two weeks off. Um, I'm sorry I'm talking really fast. I want to kind of get through the intro <laughs> a little faster than before, because uh, I don't want to run out of time. Um, I've been knitting for about eight years, and I step me and my best friend Stacy um, learned together. Um, it was a bit of a process at first, and it was a hilarious experience, um, and it took us a while. <laughs> but we're we're both knitting now, and um, I have been addicted since I started. I um, have gone on a few hiatuses in between um, for. The most recent one lasted about three years. I didn't knit much. Um, I was just really tired and drained from the particular job I was in and uh, didn't get a lot of knitting done. And um, now I've been back in the full swing of knitting, um, cranking out projects left and right, I feel. And I've really been enjoying it. I've discovered that without knitting, I'm really not myself. And I really need knitting in order to be Sarah. Um, so that's that's the short of it. Um, if you have questions, um, you know, pop me some comments. Um, and I'll be glad to answer anything. Um, yeah. So um, I wanted to show you guys. Oh, before I go into my whips, um, I wanted to just uh, say that um, you can find me on Ravelry as Sar Lozy. S A R L O Z. Um, I pronounce it Slaws. Um, we can boss We don't pronounce our eyes, so Slaws. Um, it's a username I use for everything. Not the easiest to say, and I apologize for that, but, um, let me just call me Sour. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> um, so, I wanted to show you my whips instead of vlogging about them, because I find whips are really hard for me to talk about, um, because I feel like when I get to the FOs, I'm just repeating myself, and, um, I don't want to bore you guys, so I haven't been showing my whips as much as I used to. I've just been showing you guys my FOs, um, so I'm going to show you some of mine today. My main whip is the Weekender bag, and it's by Hillary Hunt, I believe. And I'm using some stash yarn, guys. Can you believe it? Um, yeah, my stash yarn's not going great. I've been buying a lot of yarn. I love yarn. I can't help it. It's it just calls out to me, and it's and it says, "Touch me, buy me, don't leave me." So I have to buy it. Um, and I have a shirt that I recently got, and it's perfect for me. It's um, it's pink, um, and it says. <laughs> I'm a knitaholic on the road to recovery and then it's got like a yarn of ball with the teal streaming underneath it and underneath that it says just kidding I'm on the road to buy more yarn 
it's just perfect. Um, it sums up my life. Okay, not sums up my whole life, but my knitting life. Um, and I've been trying to use up my deep stash, and this year was supposed to be the year of the stash down. And I haven't buying a lot of yarn. <laughs> But um, since I finished my blanket, um, I feel like I've been cranking out a lot of projects um, using my deep stash. And um, maybe this should just be the year of stash dive in versus stash down because um, I'm not really stashing down. I'm just kind of, I'm adding. But I'm also getting rid of the old stuff. And this weekend bag has been the perfect project. I saw it. Um, on the old loops podcast, Lydia was knitting it, and um, I think she's on her second one. She's making it for her daughter, but she made another one before that. And when I saw that, I was like, "Oh my god, that's the perfect project." Um, I personally won't be carrying around as a tote bag, like in my daily life, um, because it, it is holy. Um, it has holes in it, uh, lacy. But um, I would, I really need a laundry bag. And this is a perfect laundry bag, so mine's gonna be mine's pretty long, and um, I'm gonna use it for my laundry. I live between my house and my boyfriend's house, so um, transporting laundry back and forth um, gets a little cumbersome. I've been using like tote bags, and it just doesn't work that great. I have like six of them to bring home stuff in, so um, this is the perfect project. I'm stashing, I'm stash diving. Um, here it is. See, it's pretty long. Um, Swiss DK. The green is asparagus. The brown is truffle. I'm holding the yarn double for um, so that it's a bulky um, weight. And um, I love it. It's knitting up super fast. And I'm using a lot of yarn. So the brown is one skein. Um, is one skein um, held double. I knit from both ends of the ball. The green is about. This green has about three and a half. Yeah, um, balls. Um, well. Three and a half skeins in it. I'm working on the fourth, and I have a little bit left. Um, I only got that much left, and that one is being knit from both sides of the skein as well. And once I finish in the green, I'm gonna do the ribbon. Um, but I'm gonna do the ribbon in yellow. It's called pale lemon, same yarn. Um, so that's my main project. I'm using Chai Gu size 13 US needles uh, with the red lace cord. And it's um, my interchangeable set. And I'll discuss the needles more in the needle segment that I want to do um, later on. And that'll probably be a video, um, a video as well. I think it would just be easy to talk about the needles with the video. I've been testing new needles out so I can give you guys a review on the different types because um, my nit picks weren't cutting it from me a year or so ago, and they kept falling apart and breaking. And um, they were being such, they were a hassle to use. So I went looking for um, a new brand and um, did a lot of research on Ravelry. And it was tough for me to decide because everyone had their different preference. Um, so I just wanted to try a few out and you know give my experience with the needles um, and my review on them for my viewers or followers, I should say. Um, so I'll do that eventually. Um, I also, my boyfriend got me a pair of, um, bought me the Cobbins interchangeable dog set. So I got the full set of those now too. And I've been trying them. Um, they were birthday gift. So, yeah, that's my main project. Um, also working on my level up socks. <laughs> that's not a surprise for you guys, I know. I'm using Opal Sock Yarn. Not sure if I'm a fan of it. It's a little prickly feeling, a little stiff feeling. Um, Here's my Level Up sock. It's a pattern by Heather from Highland Handmaids. Love her yarn. Go check her out. Uh, she has a podcast as well. Has a shop. Um, it's a great pattern. Um, the thing that's the thing about the pattern is that um, it is cables, and they're a pretty easy cable to remember. But I don't really like the idea of cable knitting. Um, it's a little fiddly for me. Uh, once I get going, it's not a problem. But um, the process of the, the sitting down and actually starting the project gets me because um, I'm like, Ugh, do I really want to work on cables right now? No. So then I go work on something else. But these socks have been on my needles since January. Yes, January. Crazy. Too long for a sock. So, I'm sorry, I'm a little off-center. 
and I apologize for that. Um, I'm sure you guys don't mind. Anyways, crazy, right? And my boyfriend, he's been really on my case about these socks. He really wants a pair of socks, and I needed him a pair once before, and when I finished them, they were they just weren't to his liking. They didn't fit him well. Um, they were a little baggy. The heel was too long. Um, yes, I did have him try them on as I as I went, but when I got them off the needles, they just didn't fit the same way. Um, so he didn't really like them, and it was when I first started knitting socks, and it's in um, just an acrylic worsted, um, coincidentally soft. So I love them. They're cozy. I wear them around the house in the wintertime with slippers, and I can throw them on. I just rolled the cuff down a lot more than I normally would. I don't usually fold my cuffs down. Um, oh my god. Sorry guys, there's like all these spiders out here. This is my second time filming out here in this one spot. The first time I got distracted because there was a huge spider on the side of a box that my iPad is sitting on as I'm recording. And now there's a little spider over here. And I think maybe it's the, ba the big spider's baby because it looks like the same type, just smaller. Um, I I'm getting so distracted. Um... And I don't even know where I was before I got distracted by this spider. So I apologize. Um, not a big... Cables aren't for me. They're just too fiddly. Um, I use a Clover interlocked... One of those um, stitch markers that open and close. They're great. I don't use them as stitch markers. I use them as um, correctors, I would say. So whenever I have a drop stitch, I use those to hold on to my drop stitches. I was using those as my cable hook uh, for these socks and I use them to mark my spot like in a pattern row um, so if I'm in a row and I notice a mistake I find the mistake put the stitch marker on there so I know where to stop when I'm tinking back um, so I really like them for stuff like that and I use them to show me um, to mark the front of my work and um, sometimes when my progress is going slow and I can't really see much progress I'll use those to mark how much I've knit um, I really like um, Clover, I think uh, makes the best that I've tried, they're not flimsy feeling, um, so I like those a lot, they're the um, orange and teal ones. Um, so those are my level up socks, and I've started the second sock for my boyfriend. I'm hoping he likes these when they're done. Um, there you go, there's the cable, it looks really nice, I've got my wonderful stuff stitch markers you can read my favorites um, post um, that has her shop information and the reason why I love them on there um, so yeah I like the cables I just don't like knitting them um, nothing wrong with the pattern I like the pattern I like knitting them once I get going it's the whole having to start knitting them I don't that has put me off on these socks um, my boyfriend put them on when I gave him the first sock to try on. He's like, oh, it's prickly, which is a problem I've been having with Opal. I've tried washing it in conditioner, and still, like, it's just really coarse feeling. So if any of you guys know any tricks to um, soften it up a bit, please let me know. Because <coughs> I have two other skeins of Opal, and this is my first time using it. Um, and I'm not sure I'm a fan of it, and I don't want those two skeins to go to waste. Um, yes, these socks are super long. No, my boyfriend's feet are not this long. He likes a sock with, um, a lot of negative ease, so it stretches out a lot on his foot. So I need to add extra length to it. Um, his feet are very similar in size to mine. They're pretty much, um, a smidge wider and a smidge longer. So, um, that's kind of a benefit of making him socks because if he doesn't like them I can take the toe back and redo the toe and I have a sock for myself um, so I don't have to lose a lot of work on it which is great um, for him I use a fish lips kiss heel in fact I use that for all my socks now I really enjoy this heel um, it knits up nicely it's a fast um, heel to make and it fits and my boyfriend likes it because it's um, a lot like commercial heels and Honestly, I think this heel was made for my boyfriend's foot. Um, it was a perfect fit for him. I had no complaints about it. Um, as for the toe on his next sock that I make, I'm going to start um, decreasing for the toe after. Uh, when I get um, out, when I, when it, I have enough knit that it covers his pinky toe, then I'll start the decreases because he doesn't like when it tugs against his toe. He feels like it forces his toe close to his other toes, and he doesn't like that tug. So, um... 
these ones I did um, I decreased row two knit rounds and then um, and, th and then decrease rows um, so I have two knits in between each decrease uh, for a longer toe um, they fit him okay he, he he thinks they fit fine but I really think I need to start decreasing past his toes I was doing it halfway at the toes and um, it doesn't really work for him it works great for me but not for him um, so yeah my level up socks I've got the heel done and I've got a bit more to go on this one I'm hoping to finish him before I go back to work they're on 1.5 millimeters I mean sorry 1.5 US 2.5 millimeters um, I need all my socks on this size um, I like the gauge I get and um, I know I know sizing with these <laughs> I know how big I need to make them um, how many stitches I need to cast on. Um, I cast on the same amount of stitches for both my socks and my boyfriend's socks. Um, I just knit his longer so that they stretch a little more. Um, yeah. So I'm going to start doing the um, cuffs though in a smaller needle size because they are a bit loose on both of us. Our ankles get a little skinny. Skinnier, I should say. I don't really have skinny ankles, but um, I kind of kind of have ankles a little. Not quite, but not too far from it. So those are my level up socks. I'm also working on um, the fly leaf shawl by Michelle Miller. Um, it's for my mom. It's for her late. It's, it's, a, it's a late birthday gift. Um, I said she could pick anything she wanted and I'd make it for her. And she um, she was hinting that she wanted. Um, a jade cashmere one skein sh shawl which I made for myself not too long ago well back in the winter time and um, it's just not a pattern I would knit again and um, we had been talking about patterns we'd never knit and I had mentioned that's one of them and then she was a little disappointed so I showed her this one um, and she liked it a lot so she asked for it in cream um, so there it is um, it's no makers in her butter cow colorway um, you guys know that, um, or for those who have read my blog, you know I'm obsessed with Gnome Maker's Yarn. Um, it's great. This is her finger and weight house gnome. It's um, merino, and it is 75-25, I believe. It could be 80-20, but I'm pretty sure it's 75-25. Um, it's, I think, one of her most popular bases. Um, and I really love her butter cow. It's kind of like um, a creamy, fleshy color. Um, it's perfect. Um, for like um if you want to make toys um so yeah I love it I'm gonna have to make another one I think and I definitely have to make me um a shawl for myself and but a cow I bought some more I ordered a, I ordered some yesterday so I can make myself one I'm also gonna need a little more to complete this so but a cow no makers fly leaf shawl it's it is really pretty. I highly recommend it. It's um, very subtle up top with that nice delicate looking design. Um, not too lacy actually up top. Um, it only has a couple yarn overs in each row if you, and um, it's really pretty. Um, but the bottom part, part is like, um, bottom of the shawl is a leaf motif. It's really nice. Um, and then I'm um, knitting the Thomas Lily by hold on, Jennifer Thompson. I had the pattern next to me. I'd show it to you, uh, but it's not going to really show up well on camera. The pattern I printed out is in black and white, and I'm not sure how the lighting is. Um, it's casting a glare on my screen, so um, I don't think it's going to show up well. So, But it's Thomas, C-A-M-A-S, Lily, by Jennifer Thompson. Um, and I'm using Cascade Heritage to knit it which is super soft I've never used Cascade Heritage in fact I haven't used much of um, much yarn from Cascade um, and I just fell in love with this when I saw it at the yarn shop it's um, from a local yarn shop in Salem um, I visited there not too long ago with a friend of mine um, I met her up for some froyo and um, there is a yarn shop behind a restaurant that I had sat down for it for lunch and um, we decided to go for a walk and I bought some and the color she said is very me it's like a citron green and this is actually a pretty good representation of it right now um, 
and I got four skeins, and I'll probably only use three, so the other one will probably be used for a, a shawl or for some socks. And I don't have much done. I just have the hem. And um, I hope I hope I tell you everything I want to about this, or my projects for that matter, because, like I said, I've had a few, um, a little bit of trouble recording today. Um, so, that's, that's it. Some stitch markers to mark my stitches so it's easier for me to count. They're um, Gwendolyn stuff on Etsy. Check out my favorites blog to um, hear more about them. I use them for everything. I love them. She has regular size ones for um, needles ranging from, I think, size 3 up to, I don't know, 8 or 9. And then she has um, a jumbo set which takes over for higher needles and then she has micro ones for sock needles they're great and they're colorful and I love them so that's the Kamas cardigan it's really pretty it's got like um, lace panels on the side um, so I'm hoping to get this done so I can wear it for fall and spring or even in the winter time in the classroom I work in um, you know I need something that's going to be able I can take off and on easily so I'm hoping that's going to be it um, and I'm knitting this on some Novas by Knitters Pry, which is a new needle to me. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my Chai Goo. The, um, the Flyleaf Shawl I'm using my Novas on, the Knitters Pride. Um, those are new to me as well. I bought um, Knitters Pride combo pack so I can try out the different needles so that um, I can report on them. Uh, but Novas weren't part of it, so I bought a sock size so I can um, test them out with socks, and I really like it. I'm using it for my flyleaf shawl. Um, this one I'm using my Chai Glue Red Lace. Um, these are size size 3, uh, 3.25 millimeters Red Lace cable. I have the other cables um, from Chai Glue. Um, I'm not a I shouldn't say I'm not a fan of them. I do like them. Um, and they're good for small projects. Um, if you get a magic loop, a small project. Um, but I like magic loop and, with the red lace. And I have no problem with ladders. Um, and I like that it's sturdy feeling when I'm knitting. I, nothing twists on me. And I don't feel like I'm going to drop anything. Um, the cables just feel sturdy. And that's a new um, quality that I found I like in my needles. Um, is that the sturdiness, which is um, another thing why I, um, the Nidus Pride I got. I actually like those, the Novas, because they have a nice cable. All the Nidus Prides have the same cable, and it's really nice. It's flexible, and it's um, and it's sturdy. So, I'll go into more about that, though, when I do a needle segment. Um, so, yeah. Those are my whips. Oh, I also have an elephant. From Julie. I want to say her name is Julie. It could be Julia. From um, Little Cotton Rabbits. And I made the elephant. Her elephant, she just got really some patterns. Before that, she hadn't been. And, but she was well known for her, her rabbits and her elephants and her other toys um, that she would sell. And um, I love her blog. And I've been following her since I started knitting. Um, and I was attracted to her toys at first. But then, um, reading her blog I realized her son has autism so I was really able to connect to her on multiple levels not just knitting and she's inspired several projects over the years and um, I love reading about her her kids and I love reading about her everyday life and her knitting um, she just seems like a really sweet person and um, you know working with kids with autism I know it can be tough and I know um, the struggle the, the kids go through and the families go through and I just love being able to um, hear about her family and um, you know it just reminds me of what I do for a living and why I do what I do and um, you know it's a great blog and so I started her elephant out of Malabrigo Worsted and Taupe colorway um, and I was running low on the yarn, so I actually had to switch my plans. I planned on making the boy elephant, um, but I had to switch over to the girl elephant because I was running low on yarn, and she uses a contrast in yarn um, with the girl. So I used the top, the taupe. Sorry, I always call it top, <coughs> which I know is incorrect, um, but I do. Anyways, 
So here it is. It's super cute and super dainty. Um, and I have all the other pieces done. I just have to seam it all up together and sew it together. Um, I'm using the Swiss DK um, and the peel, the peel yellow, the um, peel lemon it's called for the contrast and color. So it's for her shoes and for her little panties that are on her body. So in the body is the taupe halfway through and then you switched for the bottom to the yellow, the contrast and color. Um, I love her pantons and they're really detailed and she has great instructions. Um, and the toys always come out so great, but there's really a lot of work to put together. And that's why this little gal is sitting in my project bag. Um, this is a project bag I, pick up, I picked up online at So You, S E W E W E, a while back. I don't, I don't really know if she's making a lot of project bags anymore. Um, I thought I read somewhere she was going into surgery and she was cleaning out her shop. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure how true that is. And I haven't really seen any, too many bags on her, um, on her website recently. But I love this, um, fabric um, and it's a good it's a good little project bag for like socks and stuff um, I think I went over everything I had my weekender bag which I showed you first and then I showed you my level up socks I showed you the fly leaf shawl and I showed you the Thomas lily so those are my whips um, and I just wanted to go into some spinning with you guys too because that was something I taunted you a little bit about in my last post and um, I don't really show my spinning much because I'm a slow spinner and um, there's not really much to show you from session to session um, because it all kind of looks the same on my bobbin um, so I don't really show it off much but I want to um, so I think that's the good thing about the um, doing a podcast or a video podcast because it'll be easier for me to show you um, what I'm doing so the main thing I'm working on is this one and I'm trying to get a good color representation, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's, that's going to happen. It's a really great color. The colors change from um, like greens into blues into purples and a uh, maroony, a maroony pink purple color. Um, all the colors are really, oh, that's not too bad. I really, um, deep and jeweled. I like it. I like it a lot. It's um, BFL from Sunset Fibers. If you haven't checked out um, Linda's Etsy shop, you really should. It's Sunset Fibers at Etsy. Um, her her robin. That's just great. I love spinning with it. It just it's so effortless to work with, and um, everything is pin drafted, so it's really smooth and. Um, really great to work with. Um, highly recommend her shop and Linda's a sweetheart. Um, she's really sweet. She does a Robin of the Month Club. Um, you can either do Koi Dale or BFL. She has other yeah, um, other fibers as well. She has Polworth and she's been doing silk hankies recently. Her colors are great. I love them. Check her out. So that's my main thing. I'm gonna... I plan on... This is spinning up pretty thin. Um, so, um, what I want to do is I want to Navajo ply it so that I get a three plied yarn and I really hope it's enough to knit like a pair of ankle socks or, um, it might become a shawl actually. I'm not sure, but it's really pretty. I love the colors and I want to keep the colors, um, repeats long and in session. So that's my plans for that one. Sorry, my cat has joined me on the table and she's rubbing her head against all my enabling stuff. I have a box that has a bunch of my stuff in it to keep it all in one place and she's she's loving it right now. Um, so then I have No Makers. Um, this is a bat I got from her a while ago. It's um, a, She made it up for the um, Fat Fiber Match Box in 2012. It's called Beaker. It is Llama merino bamboo and fake cashmere the bat's gorgeous and it's just spinning up so nicely and i love the effect that the yarn has it has a nice molded effect 
and like some baba pollen and um, I was afraid it was going to be muddy but it's not and I can't wait to see what it looks like all plied up. My plan is to make a two ply. I had two bats, um, 2.4 ounces each. So I want to do two ply with it and I've got the first bat done. The second bat I'm still working on. Um, I started this on my first wheel which is a heavily hand spinning ballast. And this is the first wheel I got. Um, it's a great starter wheel. Um, she's a bit rocky, unstable a little, um, and she makes a lot of noise. Um, she's a chatty one, but um, it's a great wheel to start with. I recently bought um, a ladybug, though, and once I started on the ladybug, which is what I'm spinning the BFL on, um, I don't want to go back to my ballast. Um, nothing against it. I love the wheel still. But the ladybug is so smooth, and she's so quiet, I can really get into a, a meditative mode with her, uh, which is great. So I'm going to transfer what I have spun up of the second bat onto a ladybug bob and, and finish, um, finish on her. And so here's a picture of the bat. I shouldn't say picture. This is the actual bat. Um, it's great. It's orange, green, and white, and it's super soft, um, and it's really nice to work with. Um, I really enjoy it, so I can't wait to see what that's done, what that looks like done, and I'm hoping to transfer bobbin sometime while I'm on vacation. Um, oh, because I want to finish it, and it was really fun to work with when I was working on it. Um, and then next up is a single. I had an e-spinner for a little bit. It was a Heavenly Hand Spinner Respira. Respira. And um, from Heavenly Hand Spinning. And I just couldn't get used to it. I couldn't connect with it. And it was really frustrating. So I ended up selling it um, so I could get my ladybug. Um, I'm not an e-spinner kind of gal. I don't think I'll ever be an e-spinner gal. I really like the meditative mode of pedaling. And... Um, Sorry, it is a spider, <laughs> a huge spider. Um, I really like pedaling, and I just, he spin is not for me. So this was what I have. I had it left on, it's a single that I had left on my bobbin for about a year, and I really needed to get it off the bobbin. So I'm actually going to keep it as a single. I'm going to try pulling it and see what happens. Um, I don't usually knit with singles, um, so I had no desire to make one. But i got to do something with it, so that's what it's going to be and it's a nice purple. It's very thick and thin. There are spots that are underspun. There are spots overspun. Um, so we'll see what it looks like when I actually set it. I haven't done anything with it. I just took it off my bobbin and skeined it. Um, but it's pretty. So that's my rips and my my fiber, my spinning. Um, I wanted to do a quick enabling section because I don't have a lot of time a lot of time on my camera. I think I can get about 50 minutes and I'm already uh, 30 minutes in. So, and I do apologize. Um, I've recorded it quite a few times today and I can't remember what I've said in what session at this point. It's kind of blurred all together. So I know I'm probably forgetting some stuff. Um, and, um, you know, if I feel like I forgot anything in this one, if I make another one, I'll definitely try to add what I forgot in. Um, so let me get on to what I have to show you. Um, I, I'm just going to reach over for a second. Oh, my cat might actually walk through the frame. And I, I apologize if she does. And I apologize for crinkling. All right. So actually, the first time I had a full video, I actually finished the vlog um, once. <laughs> Um, I got some, some more yarn in the meal afterwards, and I wanted to show that off. So that's why I was tried recording the second time. So the first thing I'm going to show you is my old loops purchase. Now this is my first old loops purchase. And the girls from old loops, Lydia and Sarah, Sarah, have a blog. I really enjoy watching it. They remind me of me and my friend Stacy. They're hilarious, so go watch them. And they sell yarn on Etsy, old loops. And the yarn is gorgeous. I love their colors. Um, they're very playful. And their the tags are cute. I'll show you them. So this is 
Paradise Falls. It's part of their UP collection. And this is actually a really good picture, um, representation of the yarn. It's blue, orange, and green. Really lovely. And it's, there's their, there's their tag, Oh Loops Paradise Falls. They got a little Mickey because it's part of their Disney collection. And it is 75 Spoo Wash Merino, 25 Dylon. Love it. Definitely can't wait to try it out. And Sarah and Lydia are awesome. And then I got Thumper. I mean, best character in Bambi, right? So there it is. Pink, gray, black, and tan, and cream. Love it. I don't know what it's going to be, but I love it. And it's got a little pink Disney, um, Mickey Mouse on there. And once again, a oh, whoops. Um, it's really squishy um, and soft, and it's skinned up. Um, Paradise Falls is actually going to be a pair of socks. I know it's going to be a pair of socks, so I might cake that up soon. Um, once I finish the up socks, start on those. Don't hold me to that, because I could change my mind. Oh, loops. Love them. Also like the girls um, from In This Knit podcast, and that's how I found Oh, loops. They mentioned them on their blog, so um, their podcast. So check both of them out. Um, in This Knit Girls, um, their podcast is In This Knit. Um, S K and I T, and I think I actually have them. Um, if you look in my sidebar on the blog, um, I think I have a link to that podcast. Um, and I'm gonna double check that, and if not, I'll add it. And I want to add old loops as well, so you guys can check them out. Um, so I also have some yarn. Sorry for the crinkling from Highland Handmaids. I kind of have a little more enabling than I would, but it just happened it was a good week for me to get meal. So, um, I love Highland Handmaid's Yarn. Um, Heather has some great colors, and she has some really interesting base, bases that I don't see in other indie dyers. So, um, these are all her Silver Maple Sock, which is 60% Superwash Merino, 30% Bamboo, 10% Nylon. Silver Maple Sock. Highland Handmates. This one is Boardwalk Roses. And it's a nice tan, white, blue, and purple, and hot pink. Really pretty. And then I have Best Foot Forward. So best foot forward which is like a purple light purple orange and green and white and then this one is Captain Kenway it is a reference to something um, I know some of you who know the reference are probably laughing at me because um, I don't know it <laughs> but it's a very sorry that huge spider is back and I don't want him to get into my yarn, um, but it's very manly color, so I was thinking I'd make some socks with it for my boyfriend, so it's like a light tan cream to a dark tan and a gray. Highly handmaids, all of those. Really like her yarn. She has some nice colors, so check her out. Um, it's good prices. She has decent prices as well, and her shipping is super fast. Hers and Amanda from No Makers, has re they have really fast shipping. I'm always surprised when I get their packages so soon. Um, and they usually ship out, like, within the hour that you get them, uh, put the purchase in. Um, so then I have Spin and Fates. And this is my first Spin and Fates um, purchase. And I've heard good things about them. And I like, I've seen some colorways from them that I really like. So I decided to check them out. And I found a few stuff that I liked. Um, the first one is called Hocus Pocus. And right now, I'm really getting into fall. I can't wait for the cooler weather. This week, we have had some nice, cool, cooler weather. It's been um, in the 70s, so mid-70s, high 70s. And I could, I'll take 75 every day of the year, all day long, with a nice breeze. And I would be so happy. Um, it's been, oh, summers here get really hot, really humid. Um, and I'm, I'm 
ready. I'm ready for the cooler weather. I'm sorry, there is a plane going on by overhead, so I apologize if my sound is off. So um, right now, I'm really looking forward to the cool weather, and I'm really starting to get into the fall um, season and um, Halloween stuff. Um, I know it's a little early, but that's not too, too early, but I'm looking forward to it. So in anticipation, I bought Hocus Pocus. And it's black, orange, purple, with some lighter areas that look almost yellow in the orange, or golden, I should say. So I don't know if you can get a good color representation. I'm, I think the purple gets a little drowned out in the black, um, but it's gorgeous, and it's really squishy. Um, it looks like it's a two-ply. I could be wrong, but it looks like a two-ply. And it is that Tula base. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know. But here it is. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And that is Spin and Fates. Um, so I got that. And then they have a Twisted Sisters pack, which is um, two skeins, I think they're half skeins, of um, coordinated yarn. And the way she dyes them is that one skein has a main color with um, bits of contrast and color in it. And then the second skein is mostly the con contrast and color with bits of the main color in it. So I've got um, the colorway Gryffindor, and it's like the gold with the crimson and the crimson with the gold. Um, and it's really soft. This looks like a two-ply too. It looks like it's their Tula base as well. So the 80 Superwash Merino 20 Nylon. Spin and Fates. I'll show you the back. Gryffindor Twisted Sisters. So it's lovely. Um, I, might make, I might make like a scarf or a cowl with this. I want to do stripes. I had first thought about doing stitch surfers because it would be perfect for stitch surfers. But um, then I bought some which leads to my next purchase. Some yarn from Cupcakes. Cupcakes yarn on Etsy, uh, which is a set she put together specifically for stitch surfers, and I think that's the one I want to use for a pair of stitch, stitch surfers. So these might just be stripes on something. I don't know what, but something. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if I mentioned my allergies are really bad, so my voice isn't that strong. And it's really scratchy. So I got this in the mail right after I had finished a recording earlier. And um, I just wanted to show it to you guys. It's um, She's got this lovely um, cupcake tissue paper around it. And she sent a little thank you card. Um, so it has a little cupcake on the back. And in the, in the envelope she gave me one of her buttons. So it's... There it is. And it says cup, cupcakes, cupcake yarns. And here's a little thank you card. Thank you so much. And I love the top is a little sheep. Yep, thank you so much for choosing my shop. It means the world to me. I am. Um, I really like when um, shop own indie dyers and shop owners in general give you a little thank you card or write a little thank you note on your invoice. Um, Heather from Highland Mermaids does that all the time and um, it's really sweet. I like that they take that time to recognize you as a customer. And so this is um, a stitch surface that she's she made and how awesome. Look at it. Hot pink watermelon. That's what it's going to make. It's going to make watermelon stitch surface. So it's a hot pink with dashes of black dye in it. And the, um, the bottom one is self striping. So it goes, it's green, white, and then the hot pink with black dashes in it to make it look like seeds. Um, she, has a, she had a sample up in her Etsy shop with the, um, the picture um, of the skeins. There was also um, a picture of what the stitch surfer looked like. And it is so cute. So I couldn't resist. Um, it's lovely. I love it. And I can't wait to use it. Um, and it's, once again, 
Cupcake Yards, and you can find her on Etsy. Um, look at how cute her logo is. Like, how can you? It's just too cute. I can't stand it. And she's handwritten what it is on the back. Slice of Summer. Stitch Surfer. Two and a half, um, oh. Yeah. Two, two, two skeins. Two and a half skeins. I think that's what that says. Um, it's called Spit in the Seed Slice of Summer. 75% Superwash Merino. 25% Nylon. So I can't wait to use those. Um, oh. You know what? I don't think I showed you the bags, and I apologize if I did show you this, and I apologize if I didn't show you this, and I'm saying I already showed it to you. <sighs> I have talked about these bags for, for a lot today. A lot. And I love them. And, um, Linda, don't think you, don't think I don't like you any less because I almost forgot these if it's not in this podcast because, um, like I said, I had two tapings before this and a few test runs before that and um, had mentioned them so here it is Linda of My Needle Look she's fabulous she is super sweet super nice um, and see it's little bunnies um, her customer service is really nice and I've gotten to um, chat with her a little bit since buying her bags and it's my new addiction I have bought five bags from her and most of those purchases happened within this summer time frame. So, I'm spending way more money than I really should. But her bags are amazing. Um, and I don't want to use any other project bags. And um, so, they've got pleats. It allows for a little more stuffage. Um, a little strap wristlet handle for the bag. Inside, you have um, a little snap fob so you can hold your scissors or use it as a yarn guider and it's Linda from My Needle Look on Etsy you can find her on Ravelry as My Needle Look as well um, she has a medium sized bag which is this one um, and I've got a lot in here I've got the Weekender bag and I know it's just one project but you guys heard how much yarn I, I used for that. I had a total of six, got, six skeins to start with. And all in here, baby. All in here. Yep. And those are the little skeins. 50 gram skeins. Her large bags, um, which are like sweater size bags, blanket size bags, um, are my favorite. <laughs> I have three of them. One of them I use for my cross stitch, and two of them are for my whips. And then I have two medium ones. So, look at this one. This is one of my favorites. This is one of my favorites. I don't know if you could hear me with the bag up in my face. I really hope the sound quality comes out well. I put a lot of things in front of me while I was talking. I apologize. So this one has little bras with hangers, and on the end of each hanger is um, a little breast cancer awareness ribbon. And, um... You can kind of see right there. Super cute. Um, all her bags have a pocket on the inside. Um, so see in, a, see in the pocket right there. And once again, my needle look. I hope you can see that. Um, her bag's wonderful. They're sturdy. They stand on their own. They are thick, so you don't have any needles punching through them. Um, so this bag is holding all of my whips except for the Weekender bag. So it's got my cardigan that I started with all four skeins of finger and weight down. It's got my level up socks. It's got my my shawl um, with the cake on. I had a second shawl in here that I left at my boyfriend's house. <coughs> <laughs> That's kind of in hibernation, but I had that in here too. I had my iPad, my stack of patents. My stack of patents. That's the commas, Lily. Not again. Um, but I have them, had them in here too. And I still have room for more stuff. It's crazy how much you can fit in here. Um, it's like the magic bag. I just keep putting stuff in there. Oh, I also have a bottle of soak in here. 
So on top of everything else, I've got a um, 8.4 ounce bottle of soak, and I've got scissors and some notions, and I've got um, my little gnome girl, my little witchy poo. I actually want to make her um, a friend. I'm going to knit um, a boy gnome. This is from, um, I apologize, I'm forgetting her real name, um, and I talk about her a lot in my blog. Um, Claudine, Claudina, Claudino, um, I don't remember. She's no shit, uh, no knit Sherlock on, um, Ravelry. I'm sure you guys have heard of her. But, like, she made this gnome, and it's, um, No Maker's Yarn for the face, which is better butter cow and then witch's brew which is no makers as well for that hat um the green is just a random mini skein i had laying around but how cute is she i want to um knit her up um a, a meal gnome a boy gnome and so i can hang them in my my car on my my mirror right now i have two already sitting on there a girl and a boy and um they're spring colors so i want a halloween set for the fall um, so she's sitting in there waiting. It's a little reminder for me to make one. Um, so yeah, that's my enabling. That's my whips. Um, I hope I included everything, and I apologize if I didn't. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And please leave comments. Let me know what you thought. Um, hopefully this comes out well. Um, like I said, I've recorded a few times, and I'm not sure how the quality is going to be being outside and being all allergy allergy like um and it's on my ipad so who knows <laughs> um yeah so i hope i hope you enjoyed let me know if you want me to post um some more podcasts and i will thank you bye